Once I started to understand this intersection between light and water in the body, I really began to understand how key sources of light that are missing in our interior living environments are actually debilitating to some clients. Uh, their lack of exposure to these, so these sources of, of various wavelengths of light are debilitating to clients because of the fact that, that how important they are for both energy production, adequate cellular hydration, and even the ability to support detox and drainage. So um, I don't think it's uncommon knowledge that we really do live in a world that's full of toxicity. And, you know, those of us who are be have become aware of this do our very best job to avoid taking in or maybe living a low-tox lifestyle, right? So we're aware of our personal care products, our cleaning products. We're aware of, you know, what we may use to, uh, you know, fragrant or not create fragrance in our homes. You know, so like we make different choices based on what toxin exposures we know there are and which ones we choose to avoid. So that being said, anytime I hear people talk about detoxification, they never discuss this concept that I'm going to talk about here first called redox and also how infrared and our lack of infrared light in our living environment really um, makes detoxification difficult. So here, here I'm going to break it down here a little bit, right? So first and foremost, yes, we're full of toxicity. And where are those toxins? Oftentimes they are inside of the cells, inside of um receptors inside of enzymes, right? Like, so heavy metals can outcompete for minerals, for example. And so how do we actually get those heavy metals or anything that's gone intracellular, including, you know, hidden infections? How do we get them when they're already inside of the cell? How do we get them outside of the cell? Well, spoiler, spoiler alert, I find that binders are not the most effective way. And in fact, we actually have to utilize a special property of water in order to get those toxins out in the first place. So if you've not heard of the special version of water, it's called EZ water or exclusion zone water. And I talk all about it in so many of my courses and the videos I do and the podcast interviews I've given. But this EZ water uh, or exclusion zone is what EZ stands for. This exclusion zone water was really um, researched and popularized by a lovely researcher named Dr. Gerald Pollack. And what he found was that the water inside of our cells, when it's it, when it's structured into this exclusion zone form, um, actually prevents things from penetrating it. He called it exclusion zone because it literally creates a barrier that doesn't allow anything in except what the cell needs, and especially things like uh, negative charge and photonic energy, right? So that's what, how we look at the body from this quantum level, this quantum perspective. And so what's happening these days is the cell is actually does not have adequate amounts of this exclusion zone water. Why would that be? Well, this exclusion zone water is tries to form naturally, right? So anytime there is water in its H2O o form inside of the cell and it comes into contact with the biological surface, it literally wants to structure itself into this exclusion zone because you got to view this exclusion zone water inside and also around the periphery of the cell as this selective membrane or this selective barrier. Um, and, and, you know, so if we have technically adequate amounts of this exclusion zone water inside and around the cell, things like heavy metals should not be able to get inside of the cell in the first place. And instead, they would stay in that interstitial space potentially, which is the space between the, uh, the uh, interior of the cell, just outside of the capillaries, where like the lymphatic and the immune system lives. And those metals and other toxins would be able to get processed by either the immune system or the lymphatic system and eliminated before they could wreak havoc. Unfortunately, these days, the vast majority of people are deficient in exclusion zone water. A couple of the reasons why that is, is because of the fact that we are living in an infrared deficient environment. And why is that important? Well, Dr. Pollock's lab showed that infrared light was the wavelength range of light that actually charged and maintained an adequate amount of exclusion zone water. The way he did this was he he mimicked it inside of a, a Petri dish, and it's been um this, this has been redemonstrated many times, right? So it wasn't just this one experiment, but this is a great experiment to highlight. He took a Petri dish and that Petri dish, he put in a membrane called Nafion, which mimics our biological membranes, our biological surfaces, what are called hydrophilic or water loving surfaces. So he put that inside of this Petri dish and then he took that, he took a glass of water and he put tiny, tiny little black beads in the water. So you could kind of see how the water might shift and change or how it might organize itself. And when he poured that water with the microspheres into the Petri dish, 
over the course of time, you have the membrane and over the course of time, there, there became this clear zone where there were no black microspheric beads that were able to penetrate. And what he found out upon studying over and over this exclusion that happens is pushing away this exclusion zone where those microspheres were excluded. He found that so much was excluded. And in fact, it would, it created a selectively permeable barrier to things, uh, all things except photons, basic, basically light, electricity, and charge. So this means that if we have adequate exclusion zone levels in our cells, then those, like I said, those things can't go in. However, now that our cells are oftentimes deficient in exclusion zone because we're lacking in infrared light exposures, which is the wavelength range of light that Dr. Pollock showed literally by shining infrared light into this Petri dish, that exclusion zone expanded fourfold. And so what this shows me is that my body, human bodies, our bodies are designed to be in an infrared rich environment all the time in order to maintain adequate amounts of this exclusion zone water, which means that if we come across occasional toxins or even pathogens in our environment, they don't wreak havoc inside of our cells because we are literally excluding them. We have our, this, this selective uh, barrier, if you will, this force field, this shield that's simply made out of water and how the water arranges itself to form a, a set structure, which changes its its density, its viscosity, its, its texture, right? It actually creates more of a gel-like water. And part of that is why it creates this exclusion zone barrier. Now, I talk again, I talk all about exclusion zone water, teach lots of courses. It's in so many of my courses. Um, and so I'm not gonna go into any more detail about that. But how, so now you know how infrared ties to exclusion zone water, right? We need a, a infrared exposure to maintain that exclusion zone water. Our light bulbs are now deficient in it. Incandescent bulbs had it. LEDs, fluorescence, they don't. Um, candlelight, fire, had it. We don't live in that environment anymore. Anymore. Modern window glass blocks a vast majority of it. And um, if we were to go outside, we actually would be bathing our bodies in infrared from dawn until dusk. And then at dusk, we would have campfire that would be lighting our, and heating our space all night long. So we literally would have had almost 24 hour access to infrared exposure. So it was a perfect wavelength range of light for us to have the ability to expand and keep that exclusion zone charged. Because remember, not only is that exclusion zone water inside of our cells a barrier, it's also a battery. It's a battery of potential energy. And I'm not going to go into detail about that again, but I want you to know that now if we're in deficient in exclusion zone water, not only are we more vulnerable to environmental toxins, but we're also deficient in the energy that we need to run our basic cellular tasks, as well as the extra energy that's required to actually detoxify things like heavy metals and other intracellular toxins that can get in when exclusion zone water is depleted. So how does this tie into this concept that I called redox and drainage and detoxification? Redox, I have an entire practitioner module on it. So um, redox is just basically, do you have adequate energy inside of your body to even detoxify in the first place? That's what we would call redox. And as you, can, as you heard, if exclusion zone water is a huge source of intracellular energy to be able to do just that, you can understand how low redox or low exclusion zone water really impairs our ability to appropriately detoxify and stay toxin, stay toxin free. Now, what about drainage? This is an interesting one. Because, you know, a lot of um, people, well-intentioned detoxification experts always say we have to open drainage pathways. But one of the things that they don't realize is that we actually, um, yes, we need to open drainage pathways, but we build exclusions on water. And as exclusions on water builds inside of the cells, it literally pushes the toxins out into the lymphatic system. And so there's people who, when they start to experience uh, more intense sources of infrared, such as sauna, which is a perfect example, they start to have what would be called, you know, the, like a symptom burden will appear. 
a, a quote unquote detox reaction or a feeling of ill health uh, in response to that rich infrared rich source being applied to their bodies. So what, what does this indicate to me? Well, it indicates number one, that their cells are probably pretty full of toxins and that if you're starting to push those toxins into the lymphatic system, that their lymphatic system is likely clogged. Now, of course, there's places lower on in the funnel that we need to address as well, including regular bowel movements, liver gallbladder health, right? I mean, these all go hand in hand. But I do want to say that, yes, opening drainage pathways is essential. Yes, detoxifying in order, basically living a low-tox lifestyle, essential. But one of the best ways, once you have adequate energy redox and open drainage pathways, to literally start to move the toxins from inside of the cell to the outside of the cell is through this infrared exposure. And again, we're not getting it. So what can we do? Well, we have to get our clients outside. We have to get their skin uh, in the game in terms of whenever there's infrared light available that they feel comfortable, you know, I'm not saying the dead of winter necessarily, but when they do have it available in sunlight, which again, it's there from dawn till dusk, but the wavelength range of uh, infrared that I'm really truly talking about when it comes to expanding the exclusion zone is a range that we feel as heat. So once the heat intensity of the sunlight is gone in our seasonal environment, we have to turn to alternative methods. And these methods for some people may need to be slow and like what I would call slow little hits. Um, I've seen too many times when people who truly have toxicities built up inside of them, um, they, they start to get overwhelmed by doing too long of a sauna exposure. So even starting clients out with uh, warm showers, uh, you know, uh, hot baths or warm baths and little hits of infrared in something like a sauna can go a long way towards keeping these exclusion zones expanded, right? But slowly pushing the toxins out into a place or, or into in a way that's not overwhelming to the entire system, to the entire body. And so, again, I hope you realize infrared is one of those wavelengths of light that is li we're literally designed to be around it all the time, either in the form of sunlight or campfire. And nowadays that we live at least 93% of our lives indoors and very few of us heat our interior environments using campfire, we are deficient in the wavelength range that keeps our battery charge, gives us the redox energy we need, not only to run all of our cellular tasks in the first place, but the added energy to get toxins out of our system. And we're lacking in that infrared because we're literally deficient in exclusion zone water. Uh, there's other reasons why indoor living is, creates deficiencies as well that I talk about in my courses, such as Wi-Fi exposure. But we're literally living in an environment that we don't have adequate exclusion zone water. And that makes us and our clients very vulnerable, not only to inadequate energy, which can create cellular dysfunction, but also leaves us susceptible to the accumulation of toxins intracellularly with a very tough ability to actually push them out because that's uh, that's one of the main things that exclusion zone water can do for us. So infrared, I hope you realize, is a very important wavelength range of light. It is utterly deficient in the vast majority of our lives. And so with clients slowly starting to expose them to various forms of infrared, whether it's sunlight, sauna, baths, showers, movement even to the extent that they start to generate a bit of heat, all of these things can be beneficial ways that we can start to interject infrared into their everyday lives. So they start to build the cellular energy and then the cellular toxin resilience to really allow their bodies to begin to detoxify in a way that I find to be slow and steady and not over overwhelming to clients who often come to me in a state of uh, rather poor health to begin with. So hope this helps a little bit and I'll see you next time.